All right. Okay, everybody, what's up? So this is the working chicken run uh, at the moment. So what I did is I bought two 10 by 10 foot kennels. Um, they're, they're really dog kennels. And um, the two end pieces that would have normally gone on to the end of each kennel, I just took and I extended the kennel out uh, to 30 feet instead of a 10 by 10. So um, obviously I wanted to put something on top to make sure that uh, any predators um, that were around hawks, eagles, we have eagles out here too, owls, um, and even uh, the climb, the kind that will climb a fence, a raccoon, a possum, all kinds of stuff like that. Foxes, um, weasels can get through too. Anyway, um, I wanted to put something up uh, that would support the welded wire that I'm going to be using as the rooftop. Really on top, I just want something that's really strong enough to hold the weight of an animal if it does get on top and it doesn't collapse because some of you may or may not have used this stuff before and it's got a little bit of weight but it's a little bit flimsy so it needs some support so i'm going to be laying it over in sections 10 foot sections this is four feet wide so i'm gonna have four feet wide sections and i'm just gonna go all the way down the run um as soon as this is done and as you can see, I have the support poles here. Um, these are uh, one and three eight inch top rails, 10 foot, 10, well, yeah, 10 and a half feet for the top rails. Um, and uh, these are pretty standard. And then these brackets, uh, these I picked up at Home Depot, the rails, the top rails I picked up at Home Depot, and they're in 10 foot sections. Now, um, I did like, got the idea from uh, uh, Bumblebee Junction. So I liked the idea because they braced theirs on top. Um, so I actually went, uh, they actually got the 21 foot top rails, I think, and had them cut or cut them. Um, what I did is I just went ahead and got the 10 foots because it was easy. And I went to Lowe's to pick up the brackets. Um, and these are the brackets for the one and three eight inch. So. Um, the, the key to that is though, I want to show you guys, and I'm going to show you how I do one. Um, there's this kind of, uh, um, narrower end here that normally, uh, when you use this type of bracket, it slides into this bracket and this bracket is normally facing down because these poles go to the ground. That's to build a fence. But I went ahead and took these brackets and turned them this way and just put these poles up here. But what I had to do was cut off this flared end because if you go up in here, you can see there's a bolt. And if you kept that flared end on, it would be too long. It would stick out on both sides actually. So I had to, I had to use a hacksaw and take that off so I could get those up there. And this is half inch. The beautiful thing about this type of dog, this dog kennel, most of these fences are half inch. These brackets are half inch. So everything is a half inch socket. So if you've got a half inch long socket like this, just a standard little one, this is one of the only tools you need, honestly. And all of the hardware actually comes on of these, you know, dog kennels. And like I said, it's all half inch. And this comes on it. It's just loose and these, it comes on the panels. You just got to loosen the, the bolts and and nuts and lay them in the way you got to and so as you can see it's a little bit uh our yard's a little bit contoured here so part of this end is dropping down now i'm six one so i'm rubbing on some of these and then some of these i'm hitting a little more because the yard's a little contoured and of course i'm banging my head there so i'm going to take these poles all the way down i've got them in three foot intervals because it's a 30 foot run i got 10 poles now i do have two on the end so i'm just going to take um, take it in three foot intervals and, and then we're going to lay the welded wire over top and, uh, and I'm going to, I've got some hog ring pliers that I'll show you and I'm going to hog ring plier it. Um, and then I've also got a hundred foot roll of hardware cloth that we're going to put, uh, on the bottom couple feet here and then lay the other two feet. It's four feet uh, wide. So I'm going to put two feet here and then on the outside and two feet on the ground. 
and I'm going to dig, I, as you can see, I tilled when I had the tiller to do the garden back here. I tilled this up, so I'm going to rake this all up and get, get this all moved out a little bit and then lay that uh, hardware cloth down and then put that dirt right back over top and that will hopefully deter most predators from trying to dig under the fence too. Um, so I'm going to really quickly grab one of these poles and I'm also going to show you how I'm going to take off one of these ends. Um, you just need a real basic hacksaw. Um, this one's a little bit beat up. I just changed the blade not that long ago actually. So what we need to do Try not to bang yourself around. You're gonna bang yourself. So, if you've got the tools, if you've got a work table, uh, if you've got some some vices that you can put something in, you know, be as safe as possible. I don't have uh, a real workstation, so I kind of improvise. These sandbags are actually going to be that tire. We're going to paint that tire. We're going to put uh, that flat on the ground, and that's going to be the sand bath for the chickens. So, I just got the bags out here, and I just take. Just gotta take it and get it get about yeah about yeah about eight inches of it maybe seven eight inches of it off the sandbag and I'm gonna put my foot on it keep it stable and then you're gonna want to hold it and keep it stable you want as much stability as possible and then I'm just gonna go right off of this flared end here that uh, narrower end I'm just gonna start going into it and it's not gonna be perfectly smooth I've been using this saw, so I'm probably going to catch on it a little bit. And it doesn't really take a whole lot of force, but, you know, I'm sure some of you used a hacksaw before. And then that's it, and it comes right off. And then that flared end is off, and then I just take the, my handy dandy measuring tape, and I started on the end rail and I marked three feet off. So I go from the, the nut and I go over and I measure three feet and there it's got your three feet. So then I just um, put the bracket on initially and, and put it lightly on there and put it on both sides. And then I just saw off the end, put the pole up in and tighten it up, measure it again at the, last, at the very end to make sure once you've got it up and set where it's loose and hanging, um, sorry about the train. The train runs right by the house a couple times a day. Um, just make sure you've got it and you can adjust it and then tighten it up and you've got your you got your support rails. I'm gonna take it all the way down and then uh, I'll come back at some point and show you when we start laying the welded wire over top for the uh, for the uh, cage over top. I'm gonna show everybody. Um, it's the brace rail clamp yard link um, that's the brand this is the only Home Depot doesn't actually have this which is shocking they've got dozens of clamps and brackets and fittings and all that kind of stuff and sleeves but they don't have this Lowe's is the only place that I found this and I think you can get them online but Lowe's was the only place I found it so just to let you guys know I just wanted to show you guys what it kind of looks like. Um, you just, you know, you measure off your three feet. I get it started. And then I get one of the poles. And I just kind of get it started up in there. And it'll go. There we go. And then I just hold it. I've got another one already kind of started over here. Is just kind of bend it down until I get the pole up. Oh, sorry. There we go. Actually, this one. Let me let me loosen it a little bit. It's a little bit tight. So there we go. You loosen it. Uh, the more you loosen it, the better off you are. So now this one it goes right up into there, and then you just get your uh, just get your half inch. Tighten her up. And she's good. Now I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it uh, hand just less than hand tight, so I can still adjust it. And then I'm gonna get my. Oh, let's go back to the other side. And then I'm gonna get my measuring tape, and I'm gonna go right on the edge of this nut and go over here. And oh, look at that. That's perfect. So three feet. 
and then I just tighten it the rest of the way up and go. That's it. Good? Yep. Right. Hey, what's up everybody? So, we're back out today. It's a beautiful day today. I think it's in the close to the 70s. And um, I'm starting to put the cover um, over top of the the run here. So I've used, um, I've got the 2x4 utility fencing. You can use hardware cloth, you can use a lot of different options. Um, I ended up purchasing the utility fencing and I thought this would be fine for over top because really the main thing I'm looking to keep out is the big predators and uh, owls and hawks and eagles and possums and raccoons and anything else. So this works pretty well. Um, and uh, what I've been doing is I, I took a, I've got a 50 foot roll of it, I actually have two. And um, I took that 50 foot roll and I started on this side and I laid it up over here and I uh, actually had one of my uh, steps on top of me roll it across and I just dropped it down over the other side. And what I used on this side, just to give you guys an idea, is, now I bought these and this is the DeWalt version. These are called hog ring pliers, if you've seen them or haven't seen them before. They have some pretty basic ones that don't have this device in the middle, but um, this uh, this little kit, I think it's $34.99, something like that. It actually comes with a box of the um, hog rings galvanized. So, um, now there's a thousand of them. So what I did is I, you know, I come in close and I got, uh, I took and I hog ringed pretty much on every link all the way across um, to keep this solid. And then what I've been doing, I, after I dropped that off on the other side, I hog ringed it on the other side there and then I cut it um, with my, hold on my hands. I just use my needle nose or standard pliers uh, to cut the utility fence. And then because I have this end piece and it's up against the coop, but it's not attached to the coop. Um, I bought this wire tie that you can get. We got it down the road at the milling company. Um, but it's this wire tie, and basically you just use it to you cut pieces off the length. And I'm going to show you. What it so um, as you can see, I got a few done here. I'm going to show you how I how I get this done. I've been doing it about every third every third one and I just try to make it easy on myself. Go up over the top. Come oops, right there. Down over the pole. And then wear some heavy gloves because this stuff is sharp. And I get a, get a twist in the beginning and I take my, my pliers and I just keep going and give it a nice strong twist until it's super tight. And I take those sharp edges and I just bend them up, bend them right up against the middle pole. So now you got it nice and solid, and uh, you know more than likely nothing's getting in there. And uh, I'm gonna take that all the way across and take it as far here as I can, get it get it uh, secured down, and then I'm just gonna cut lengths and do the same thing. I'm gonna take that roll, go right over to the other side. I'm gonna. Lift it up on top of one of these posts. I'm gonna hog ring it, roll it across, drop it down, hog ring it, cut it, and I'm just gonna keep on rolling. And then I'm gonna hog ring this, these together. So I'm gonna overlap because it's four feet wide, and that's a 50 foot length. So I've got four feet sections. I'm just gonna go down, but I'm gonna overlap about, I made overlap about eight inches to a foot and just keep on rolling. So I've got 100 feet, I've got plenty to go, um, to go around, so. And then I'll, after I get that done, I'll show you the finished product. And uh, then we'll work on, I've got to cut the door and uh, get that going. And then I've got to get the hardware cloth on the outside too. So we're just going to keep rolling. All right, everybody, how you doing? So back to give you a little update. So what I did, and I want you to see, this is the hog ring pliers. Just a couple times I had missed, but that's okay. So what I did was I overlapped um, uh, probably about six, I don't know, six inches, six to eight inches, something like that, about eight inches. And as you can see, you got the little hog rings, um, 
I secured them to each other and then I went to the next section over and secured it as well so it would be pretty solid up there so as you can see I can't I'm not pulling that apart and I finished wiring this to the end of the gate so that thing is oh, there's the staples. <laughs> so that's that but that's solid on there and this hog ring uh, these DeWalt hog ring pliers work really well I would recommend them so what I'm doing is basically hold on, hold on. it's all good Oh yeah, the thing in the gets way. in the way. Yeah, okay. it's broken, man. The thing that we need a new. Do we yeah. gotta wipe off the lens, man? Yeah. Let's try that. Uh, let's give it a little look. It looks all right. All right, let's give it a. Go. All right, welcome back, everybody. So I want to show you guys the um, this Dewalt um, hog ring pliers. These are very much like, you know, they're like staples. Uh, they go in, you place them right in there. Um, the loader here, you press this and uh, you go right up with it and then you let go. It locks into place and you're ready to roll. Like that before um, we're all on the same journey together here. So what I'm trying to do is to just take this welded wire and uh, I pinch it to the fence and uh, just try to get it on just about every section. Like I said, you got to press it together really well and try to press it as hard as you can up against it. Um, you might miss one. I've got some danglers here. No big deal. It happens. Nobody's perfect. And, uh, but we just secured it all the way across. And then what I'm going to do after I secure it across, and you can see how kind of fast this actually can work. You can really just secure this really quickly if you try real hard. There's a there's a single um, and get another one so the good thing is the best thing to do is to try to go link by link and then you can it'll really help and kind of tie it down as close to as possible and then go across and uh, kind of get that secured to there so now what I'm going to do my hog ring pliers and I'm just gonna keep it one full length so I can just go right across here and uh, make sure you don't cut the chain link fence and uh, just pop that off and just keep rolling right across with it and then just take it all the way across And then I came across once and I went back across the other way. So it uh, comes with a thousand hog rings. So I suspect I might have to go get another box. Um, but really this, these hog ring pliers have worked really well. So I would recommend it. So I'm just gonna get the rest of this over top and uh, we'll come back when it's all said and done. What's up everybody? So um, just wanted to, to do a quick snippet to end the video for our roof i guess you could call it on the chicken coop you're going to hear a lot of vehicles driving by it's nothing but pickup trucks here in northern michigan and uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people out it's memorial day weekend it's a beautiful day 76 degrees skies are blue clouds um clear day all day not hot um but uh, our road has become the main thoroughfare now because the, ro the main road um, that takes you up along the, uh, the shores towards other campgrounds and other destinations and cabins for people that are going up north, um, the road is closed due to the flooding. The bridge went out and so our road is a little out of the way, cut between and now our road has become the thoroughfare. So it's all good, seen lots of campers and boats pontoon boats trailers um with uh four wheelers and motorcycles and all kinds of stuff people are uh starting to get back out and try to have a good time um we've all been locked in for a long time so that's been tough on everybody anyway finishing up the video so 
we have finished off the roof or top as you will um, for the chicken coop so I've got my top rails in place they are sturdy this thing ain't going nowhere shake the heck out of the whole coop and it is solid beautiful thing about the top rails too and everything being bolted in it gives it a lot more stability like in a major storm or we have we have winds that can gust up to 50 65 miles an hour here um so it's kind of crazy the Mich the michigan weather is crazy so um as you can see uh i overlapped um by two sections two four inch two by four sections and i double um i hog ringed it twice to make it nice and secure it's not going anywhere so this is all done and of course just like on the first uh the front side when i started i did the wire ties about every third section all the way across to wire it down here and it is solid so this thing is not going anywhere um heather's already got her sitting chair to watch the chickens and um we're good to go um so that's it if you guys have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments section and i will um answer as many as i can through heather thanks everybody